I'm going to ask the team, please connect us to sing the national anthem. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, the team. Thanks for that. Um, can I please check if uh, Father Smangalisho Mkwachwa, Mkwachwa is, is on the platform or he failed, maybe he failed to connect like I did. I'm trying to look here if he's, he's on the platform. Mm, okay. I don't see him. I'm going to request that we do a one minute moment of silence. He was on the program and he was supposed to do an opening prayer, but I don't think he has joined in. I think he's still struggling to join in. May we please do a one minute moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you for unmuting me. Um, the technical team, when I do this, I'm saying, please unmute me. It took some time, but it's fine. Thank you. Um, before I can allow, I'm going to request that we share the program of the day with, with, with members of the cabinet, with the deputy president, and all South Africans. If you can also just try and load it so that we can share the program all together. Just before I can allow the, the, the MEC of Sports, Arts and Culture in Gauteng, Ms. Mbali Flope, to speak, please allow me an opportunity to just say, as the presidency, as cabinet, and as a member of parliament, we have truly lost a great leader. Minister was a very jovial human being. 
you would you would come to work depressed about any other thing and he would make a joke about it and he would say oh ilanga lizoshona liwele phume ekuseni for me as as tembi every time he would say to me tembi umfazi wami uthembi he was very supportive supportive of young people my like myself he was also very supportive to women and 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 minister was very honest and opinionated about any other thing and and we're going to miss that about him may he rest in peace i can only feel for the daughters and the many young women who he continue to support us and to show us love i'm going to request that the mc give us a wel- a welcoming remark on behalf of the provincial government of gauteng ms mbali sope please speak to us thank you Thank you that is and mute me and mute me thank you for that um i i i i think the the mc also has got technical glitches um i'm going to request that we move on to allow the south african national editors forum to give us a word and they're going to be represented by mr that we give him an opportunity to speak to us on behalf of the South African National Editors Forum the platform is yours sir thank you I'm going to request that the the GCIS team please will be on the screen. I'm I've been requesting that you unmute me for some time it's okay. I'm going to request and I'm sorry for this um DG Lusanda that uh, even DG Pumla Williams I'm really sorry for this. I'm going to request that we an apologies for South Africans. This is a second speaker who is connected but they cannot speak. I'm going to request that we play either a video or a song and we try and connect uh, people who are supposed to speak on the program i cannot move to the third person you know with the first one it was okay the second one no i, I just think let's fix our issues i'm going to request that you play a video either of the minister being jovial leaving parliament and then joining the choir the spring box moment in in parliament let's play something along those lines and then we we try and connect the speakers it will not look okay that now we must move to the third speaker who is the who is the the the, the chief of staff mr moses kosana in the in the office of the minister i'm going to request try and look for a video we can move the, to the third speaker let's connect the people who are supposed to speak um on the program minister would have appreciated it would it would honestly be wrong i'm going to request let's play a video and then let's fix the issues i'm going to call you dg on the side we apologize for for the mishap south africans and and we really apologize we want to make it perfect thanks
we're just. Just testing if everybody can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we can. We can, we can all hear you. No. Okay, I can also hear, I'm here as my slides representing Senef in the space for school. Hi, hi, Mashati. Please take the platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please Sorry, I couldn't platform. hear you earlier. Thanks. Okay. It's fine. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Mashati Gallant. Yes. Okay. Please take the platform. Thanks, my darling. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much um, for the opportunity um, to the Deputy President, the Ministers, Deputy Ministers, uh, colleagues at GCIS, journalists and everybody. Good morning and thank you very much for the opportunity to pay tribute to a really gentle soul who has touched our lives so much. As the South African National Editors Forum, we also would like to say to Jackson Temple's family, colleagues, and friends, the news of his passing really cut deep. We share in your sorrow and say, please accept our deepest condolences. As the media, we have also lost. We have lost a communicator per excellence. We have lost a gentle gentleman who spoke to us no matter what. Jackson Mutembu has been part of our lives for so long. It is hard to imagine him gone. I doubt there's a journalist out there who has never interacted with him, whether as the spokesperson of the ANC, the chief web, and now when he was leading the war against COVID-19 as the minister in the presidency. The relationship between journalists and politicians will always be a tricky one. Some describe it as the never ending boxing match between gen with journalists throwing punches and politicians taking it on the chin, but also often throwing a few back. I would say Jackson Tembu was one of those who took the punches, but also in his spirited defense of his political home and its government, he also threw a few punches back. But even when we disagreed, it never degenerated. He never insulted us, and it was also never personal. In fact, in between the boxing rounds, there was always a lot of laughter. He was one of the most jovial politicians I knew. He was accessible, he answered his phone, whether it was a cab reporter or an experienced one on the other hand. He took his time to answer the questions, understanding that it is part of holding public office. He understood that with the media calling and asking the questions, it was him as a public figure being held accountable. He understood that journalists and politicians need each other, albeit for different reasons. Politicians want journalists to communicate their policies, achievements, and perhaps not so much the failures. While journalists, on the other hand, are looking for a scoop, the next expose, and scrutinize everything, especially what, what is being said by a politician. While well, Jackson Mutembu really respected our trade, as we celebrate his life, we hang on to his words. When he tweeted press conference, he said, you wrote many stories, my last interaction with Jackson Temple was in December. I called asking for a meeting to discuss collaboration to confront the crisis facing the media. He agreed we need to end the large blood bank using a usual smaller at a time we need journalists even more especially now in the war against the pandemic. He agreed we need to find lasting solutions to support the media. Butcher? 
that is currently fighting for survival. He arranged the in days and he invited everyone. He even followed up to inform me that he had already spoken to the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, and we should move. Yeah. Sorry, it looked like I was muted. I'm hoping everyone can hear me now. Yeah. So then join now, yeah. We can yes, hear you. Can hear you. Saying that our last I'm, I'm sorry, Makati. Makati, I'm really sorry. Makati, I'm sorry, just one second. I'm, I'm going to request that everybody please mute. Somebody is talking. Mm -hmm. Everybody, please mute. The only person who's allowed to unmute is 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 um our colleague Makati. Please, everybody, please make sure that you mute because you are disturbing the speech. Thank you. You can continue, Makati. Thanks. So saying that um, Jackson then phoned um, to say that he has already spoken to the president and we should move with speed. I cannot overstate the importance of a vibrant and sustainable in Africa. Jackson and the president, hence he was passionate about finding lasting solutions to ensure that we have a strong and independent media in the future. We have all seen the devastation that COVID-19 has visited to our lives and livelihoods. The media, like other industries, was devastated by the outbreak of the virus. The industry throughout the world is looking for lasting solutions, and so are we. So, in his honor, let's dedicate ourselves to making sure that we have that sustainable, independent media that Jackson Mutembe was preparing to work, to work towards. With those few words, thank you very much for the opportunity. Let's move this project forward and make it so Indeed, he, he was very supportive of the community media in all ways. I'm not sure if on behalf of the Premier of Gauteng, Ms. Mbali Sobe has been able to connect. I've been, I've been chatting with her. I'm good to in connect you. To that I'm, I'm, good. Good. She can... <laughs> I'm listening to the memorial service. Oh, is it on? Mm. Oh. Please unmute. Hello? Uh, I'm just my hand. <laughs> Hello? Please unmute. Please mute. Yes, I'm okay. Rato, please mute. GCIS, please close them out. GCIS, the technical team, please mute them. Lerato, please mute please them. Mute. Please do that, please. Let us respect the... And we are really going to miss the minister, Matlati, like you're saying. He never undermined the community media sector. He was always available to answer questions and to respect the space of platforms like members of the South African National Editors Forum to speak and to tell the news as they are. And may he rest in peace. And I'm also humbly requesting, please mute. Let us all mute. When you join, let us mute. Minister would have loved order and let us give him that. Uh, I'm going to ask that we continue to try and, and connect uh, the MEC Mbali Sope from Gauteng so that she can speak on behalf of Premier Makura to welcome us into the Gauteng province. Um, I'm going to request now as you are trying to, to connect her, let us give an opportunity to 
a man who worked with him very closely on a daily basis, on a every minute, every second, Mr. Moses Kosana, who was the chief of staff in the presidency, in the office of the, of, of the minister, to, to speak to us about him. I'm still humbly requesting, let us mute. Colleagues, South Africans, let us mute. It is really not, not okay. Um, Mr. Moses Kosana, the platform is yours. Uh, good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Good morning, you everyone. You are very sir. audible. You are very audible. You can continue. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you, Program Director, Honorable Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Ms. Tembi Siwaya. Greeting to His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. David Dabete Mabuza. Uh, the cabinet ministers, deputy ministers, and all the participants who are here. On behalf of the staff in the ministry, uh, the staff in the departments, as well as the other entities under the late Minister Mtembri and all other government officials, let me convey our deepest condolences to the Mtembu family, their friends, uh, government uh, of South Africa, its people, ministers, organizations, and the international friends. Minister Mtembu's loving and caring attitude is epitomized by his working relations with his inner office staff and even the departments themselves. He closely interacted and supported everyone in his office from the domestic assistants the protectors, his constituency staff in KZN in Moses Mapida region, uh, DD, uh, DDM, which we call it uh, the development model in Herikwala region, as well as any other people that he came across. His work ethics and friendly attitude could be observed in the work of his interministerial committees, especially the Presidential yep. Infrastructure Coordinating Championship Initiative, yep. the National Conventional Arms Control Committees, and others. Uh, his regular formal meetings with his department and entities has ensured improved audit outcomes and performances by them. The good working relationship between the minister and the deputy minister was enhanced by their regular uh, meetings and scheduled meetings of the department and, ent and entities they both regularly convened and attended, as well as clear delegation of responsibilities to the deputy minister as soon as they got appointed and advised to do so by His Excellency, Excellency the President of the Republic of South Africa. As a spokesperson of government and cabinet, Minister Mtembu, through the GCIS, developed an effective and integrated communication strategy which ensured massive government communication on various issues of government, including COVID-19. His role as a chair of the National Planning Commission and as a minister of uh, DPME, that is the, development, uh, the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, has ensured government long-term planning objectives and the alignment of government departments to the medium-term strategic framework. He leaves us at a time where plans are afoot for a highly digitized 2021 national census by State South Africa. The entire ministry staff, including Glory Lamini, Nongwe Bamsaouli, Vusim Manyandela, Bongan Mabuza, Lawrence Gobeni, Koli Samyuti, Vusim Luli, Nombule Zondi, and many, many others, including Mashu Duvelen, as well as the two advisors in the name of Dr. Gwen Ramahopa, as well as Lukum Mtimde, will definitely dearly miss Minister Mtimde and the times shared with him in the quest for economic development, fight against coronavirus, fight against gender-based violence and femicide. We shall also miss the days when we will nibble with him in the early hours of the morning, appointment to meetings, having Nando far away places like Cockstar. The entire staff in the ministry will 
The entire staff in the ministry. I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, Musi. Please, 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 please wait. Please wait. Fellow South Africans, I'm requesting that you can the BCI team help us? Please meet this individual. I'm not sure, Comrade Tom. Is written Comrade Tom. Please meet it. GCIS. Please help us. Tom. Okay, Tom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's fine. Thank you so much. Please mute all of them. Mr. Musi, you can continue. We I apologize for that. I'm really sorry. Oh, yeah. no. Thank sorry, you. Thank you. Program director. Program director almost towards the end. As the staff in the ministry, the news of the passing of the minister has caught us so off guard that we still are in shock and it hasn't really sunk in as you would understand that the subsequent to such news, we had to get cracking in the preparation for his sending off. I would like therefore to say to the staff members, let them find time in their quiet places and so on to mourn the passing of this father figure who knew everyone by their names, not only as the staff members, but our families. May his soul rest in peace and we wish the family to find strength in their spiritual belief. And all those people who were like you, who were against corruption, who were against any form of nepotism, who stood for clean governance in all areas of his work. Thank you, the, the chief of staff in the office of the, of the minister in the presidency. Indeed, he must greet our stalwarts who left us earlier. And may he continue to rest in peace. We also worked very closely with Statistics South Africa, with Mr. Risenga Maluleka, who is the, the SG, Statistician General. We would have cracks about when are we getting the money? When are we having a meeting with Minister Tito Mboweni so that we can assist this SA to continue to be afloat? Minister was very supportive to this team. He would always say, if we don't know statistics and your numbers are wrong, you will not be able to lead. I'm going to request that um, the SG takes the platform and speaks to us. I'm also going to request that let's continue to try and connect Ms. Mbali Shope, who is supposed to speak on behalf of uh, Premier David Makura from Gauteng. Let's go, try to continue to, to network here. She's trying, she's sending messages that she's trying. Let's allow her in. She's waiting for the host. But in the meantime, the, the SG, please talk to us. This is your platform. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Minister, and indeed, Program Director. And let me salute the Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. David Mabuza, and also salute ministers, deputy ministers, uh, colleagues in government, directors general, and indeed uh, other uh, stakeholders that have supported us uh, uh, in the work that we did with uh, Mr. Mtembu. Uh, I'm not going to talk only for Statistics South Africa, but I'm going in the few minutes that I have represent uh, the presidency in the form of the administrative arm of the presidency was under minister as he was minister in the presidency. And uh, that will also include the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation, as well as uh, a GCIS, the Media Development uh, and uh, Diversity Agency, as well as SA and other agencies uh, and, and entities. I want us to peg the message of uh, uh, the late Minister Mtembu's memorial to a message that talks of humility in the services to our nation. And in this regard, we will understand that uh, it started with him as a person. It started with him as a person in that those of us who worked with him uh, were comfortable to work around him. 
usually uh, we grow up in a society all over the world where authority is feared and as such authority never gets referred to uh, on a first name in this regard and uh, and i need to uh, say this to the family uh, we would comfortably when minister was not there sometimes refer to him as uh, by his first name jackson and when people are comfortable to refer to you by your first name not in a manner that undermines you but in a manner that uh, uh, is affectionate and relate uh, uh, relates to you as a person then people are comfortable to serve with you minister had uh, such a jovial banter he would regale us with stories that would keep us rolling with laughter at times and uh, in the process while he was a supportive leader to all of us he never forgot the task at hand so his dedication his hard work and his honesty to people of south africa in executing his work was quite outstanding let me mention that uh, as an activist and we know activists activists are driven by action 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 in this regard as minister brought his activism into the work of administration he also appreciated that there was a role for other processes and in the work that we do do as administrators who served under him we had other agencies in the form of the mdda media development and diversity agency that had its board he respected and worked well with the board state say as a council he worked quite harmoniously with uh, the state's council let me correct state say doesn't have a council the statistics council is for south africa and independent of state say and independent of the minister as well he worked quite uh, uh, well with the, uh, the, 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 the state's council and they differed where they differed, but with such humility. Let us look at uh, the interface between politics and administration, the political arm that he was bringing and the administrative arm that we were bringing, those of us who reported to him. He made the environment of the people who reported to him, the people below him, much more willing to want to serve our country so that message that he drove of humility in the services to our nation he wanted it to transcend to all of us he made uh, technocrats flourish in the work in their daily work and in their duty this is a person this is the minister mtembu the jackson that we would never want to disappoint as we do our work Obviously, the presidency had a responsibility uh, to uh, work with other departments. And uh, for us as directors general, the Forum of Directors General, FOSAD, had to find ourselves linking with what he, uh, he was doing. So he consolidated in the space of cooperation throughout government. There was no way that government would fail when he was part of this government. And he always reminded us that we must work together to make sure that we succeed. We, we succeed. There are a lot of roles indeed that he, 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 he carried in government. And it was sometimes strange that he was not able to be with us, but he was always supportive wherever he was. His humility made him program director uh, to appreciate when he had made mistakes. He would always remind us, you will remember very well when he would say, hey, my daughter, I need to do this thing uh, this way. That is the humility of uh, uh, Minister Mtembu that we knew. Let me mention that uh, uh, he was always relaxed when we talk. Every now and then you talk to him, when you give him a call, he would say, what can I do for you? And that mantra of referring to all of us as a good friend, as a good comrade in the form of Wenganwan, 
meant that all of us would be free to discharge uh, our duties and differ with him where we had to differ with him. He never took differences uh, personal. He had a, a heart of an ocean to appreciate everyone and everything around him. And he was direct to the point. What he needed to tell you, he would always tell you. But he would never tell you in such a manner that you would always go out leaking your wounds out there, feeling that you have uh, been uh, blasted. He made it so easy for you to appreciate uh, him around you. Uh, fellow South Africans, Minister Mtembu died fighting a war that all of us as a world are fighting. The war against the COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. In this regard, it's like a soldier who passed and has fallen during the war, at war. And as such, it gives us more responsibility and more zeal to ready ourselves to have to defeat this coronavirus. As he has said to many of us at different times that if we don't stand up and fight this virus, it will eat us all. It has taken him now. Let us, in his memory, make sure that we save as many lives as possible and we have the power, we are the government. And as be, for us in administration, we will do everything possible in our powers to support the political leadership as we have done so in the case of working with Minister Mtembo. Of course, fellow South Africans, you will always wonder when the statistician general says these things, I still will maintain my independence as statistician general. So we are saying to Minister Mtembu, as those who work with him, who reported to him, all those agencies and entities, our boards, our uh, councils, as well as all those who work with him uh, in general, and those who were uh, uh, the generality of all of us as directors general. Who will call us Mganwami that you are no more? May the soul of our friend, Minister Mtembu, our colleague, and who we affectionately call Jackson, rest in peace. I thank you so much, Program Director. Let me thank you, SG. You know when you were speaking and you were saying that you could call you with your first name. Minister was not only a father figure to me, he was also a very, very friend. I never felt like a medium. Minister would always say to me, Sevenza, in monitoring, it's yours. And, okay, and there's a time nothing. where I took two weeks without doing an outreach program. And he called me and he asked me, Auhambi manje, Rulani. And I was really shocked. That's how minister was. We're going to miss him. And, 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 and condolences to you, SG, and, and the entire team of that SA, even the council. We only hope that he can multiply in so many ways. I'm going to request that we give an opportunity. He was also a friend minister. He could make jokes, he could laugh. Let's allow the general, Vusi Sisande, who was a close friend to the minister, to talk to us about whom Velasa Jackson Mutembu was. The platform is yours, thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Minister. Uh, let me also take this opportunity and greet our Deputy President, uh, Mr. David Mabuza, and greet all the uh, ministers and greet all the Deputy Ministers, greet all the senior officials of government and all colleagues, friends, and uh, compatriots. Uh, I should not leave out the bereaved family, the uh, Bawam Tembo. Uh, I grew up in Middleburg, which is very close to Emalashene, Whitbank, and therefore Whitbank was my second home. But it took me many years to get to know Comrade Jackson M. Tim. And I knew him 
through the trenches of the struggle. Uh, as we'll recall, in 1985, at the ANC conference in Zambia, the president of the ANC, Comrade O.R. Tambo, declared that the next decade would be the decade of liberation. This meant that the struggle would have to be intensified. But Bota, who was then president of the apartheid South Africa, also resolved that he wanted to see the, the destruction of the ANC. He instructed that any terrorist that was found had to be eliminated. MK prepared to infiltrate South Africa for operations on all fronts. The regime also prepared to find and destroy us wherever we were. Late in 1986, we were infiltrating comrades for operations when we came across an ambush set up by South African security personnel. Thanks to Clarice September, Clarice Dibe, Comrade September, who, having been arrested by the Swaziland security, was uh, having been arrested by the South African uh, security, was handed over to the apartheid security, where he immediately turned into an askari and was instrumental in assisting the system with our plans, unbeknown to us that he was already in the hands of the apartheid security. This resulted in our encounter with the enemy and subsequent arrest. I was detained in Bethal prison, being the only survivor from the ambush. Comrade Jackson and his comrades arrived in this prison where they found me already having spent some few weeks there. Comrade Jackson and his comrades had brought the city of Whitbank in Malachen back to where it belonged as far as political activism was concerned. I remember that I just arrived in Swaziland in 1986 when there were reports of killings and burnings that were happening in Whitbank. Little did I know that I would meet face to face with the activists who were participants in these events. I was not supposed to meet, to mix with other inmates. I was kept alone and recovering from the wounds sustained in the bush, in the ambush that resulted in me being shot and eventually arrested. I kept a good rapport with warders, which possibly was the reason they brought me to meet with the group. Comrade Jackson evidently was the leader of the group. In the only meeting we were allowed to have, the group was keen to know more about the ANC and its leadership. I remember the keenness in Comrade Nelson Mandela. That meeting became an important platform for political, political exchange, but that opportunity to meet for further political exchange did not repeat. The next occasion I met with most of the comrades was on Robben Island, but as fate would have it, Comrade Jackson was not among the group. He continued to serve in a different capacity. I've since read an inspirational tribute written by Dr. Brigalia Bam, who in a tribute explains that Comrade Jackson became a foot soldier for the South African Council of Churches. Most of us have vivid memories of the past, of the part the SACC played as part of the broad mass democratic movement in assisting to elevate the level of the struggle to a point where the apartheid regime could not resist any further the decision of taking the route of negotiations with the African National Congress. Let me reiterate what we have already had being stated, that the man who was laid to rest yesterday, Jackson Mtembo, was a very simple person. He liked to keep simple things the way they are. He was a dedicated person, a humble person, an honest person. These attributes he kept throughout the years as I continued to encounter him. He was committed to the goal of improving the well-being of the masses of the people. It is this dedication that saw him rise to the highest structures of the ANC and inevitably government. Many, many people and analysts associated him with a particular so-called faction of the ANC. But all these people deliberately 
choose to stay put to their way of thinking instead of evolving with the times. Simply, what these analysts need to appreciate is the fact that the ANC was self-correcting and some of the key individuals who are facilitating this transition are people like Comrade Jackson Jim. The fact that his passing drew sympathy from such a wide spectrum of our society is testimony to wide approval of his and the government's work. This does not in any way say the job is done. Much more, news, much more work remains to be done. Moreover, all this needs to be expedited. This is intricately linked to the fight against malfeasance and divisions. It is ironic that Comrade Jackson was demised by an enemy he was so alert to, COVID-19. What this says to us is that we must remain vigilant to this menace. It is without any doubt that the best we can do is to support every effort that is geared at bringing us the vaccine. The, cons the conspiracies against the vaccine are progressively being undermined by the growing numbers of people who are accepting the vaccine from the world over. The death of Comrade Jackson Mtembu is a blow that the country will feel for a long time. We shall be doing disservice to his cause if we sit back and become spectators to the toil and suffering of the poor of our country and beyond. We are going to miss you dearly, Comrade Mpigwa. Rest in peace, Mvelase. Yabongo, Finishan. Thank you. Thank you, and I I I, I apologize, uh, Mr. Vusimundi Sindayo, for not pronouncing you correctly. I I I profusely apologize. Now, the minister used to be a chief whip in parliament. He would be responsible for drawing up a list of members of the African National Congress to go and speak. And, and one day, I was concerned that um, Mr. Montingungubele could sweep, and he swept so beautifully. And, and when I entered parliament, I went to minister and I said to him, really? Maybe you must guide uh, the chief with Pemima Jodin. And then he was like, leave Pemi. She's doing her work. Monthly is going to sip very correctly. And, and I'm, I'm going to ask you as a member of parliament, I hope you have logged in, um, to just speak to us as a member of parliament and, and how you have experienced the minister throughout. I'm trying to look here. I'm looking at the participants. We are 458. Um, maybe my eyes are on me. I hope you are log logged in. Please speak. Yes, thank I'm you. logged in. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Should, should I go in? Yes, 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 yes. Please do, please thank do. You, yes, please do. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> You call Thank me you. Prime Minister. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Program Director, Deputy President, the entire executive, the entire leadership of government. I take this opportunity to extend my condolences to the family, Yagwam Velase, Eba Tenjini, to the entire families of our country who have lost their loved ones. And I've been asked to speak about Comrade Jackson from that parliamentary perspective. And I, I thank for the opportunity. Maybe quickly, uh, Comrade Program Director, just to say I've known Jackson as early as in the 80s, especially when I was a shop steward from the NUM. And when he, late in the late 80s, he was a publicity secretary of UDF. I still remember him at Orlando Stadium uh, singing and dancing with a bad top 
and as to about the Gaga stadium that's the kind of energy he used to display in whatever he was doing that time I was a soft steward and also when I was an organizer nationally of the South African Health Workers Congress who was a late affiliate of UDF and again when I was a member of the PC it was a time a lot of difficult things were happening in the organization Cobram team was deployed by the NEC to work with us in Gauteng his humility his uh, open mindedness without sparing you his honest views about any situation was also a very strong and actually an appealing uh, aspect of his character having served under him as a chief whip i remember in 2016 it was the end of the local government term then we were redeployed and i came to cape town he called us on the 4th of october 2016 to prepare us as new members of the portfolio committee on, on, on communication the immediate challenge then was the sabc and it states and it appeared that a lot of work and interventions had to take place i remember comrade jackson giving us orders i think i was with comrade tolash and other comrades that uh, for the sake of a reputable and a clean government for the sake of the credibility of the philosophy of the governing party he is instructing us to go there and actually stand and be the ambassadors of those principles and indeed on the 5th of october the first meeting we had we called for the hearing and the rest is history that was comrade ntembo and again comrade ntembo i remember very well one of the most defining characters the uh, defining features of his leadership was a uh, loyalty and discipline to the certain agreed principle i remember i for one at times i do lose patience with issues there's a time i was committed to speak out on some challenges around 2017 and 2016 and uh, when i said these issues it appears that me and him were in agreement but we disagreed on the method and uh, when i went public comrade ntembo who i thought was my close friend went out in public hard on me and i remember the words he used he said mine is a worst form of ill discipline and i was a bit confused because i thought me and him were in agreement and when i came back i thought in a number of issues not exactly the things i said were in agreement but he said you were ill disciplined because you were supposed to follow the structures of the organization that was in term for you in the issue of parliament and executive that is where mtembu comrade mtembu comrade umte ujackson displayed consistency you know when comrades are in parliament when they go and be in the executive a number of them do change when they are mps they want the executive to be accountable when they change and become executive they take a different stance comrade jackson who was leading us as a chief whip he was a commander and a director of consistency and the way he related first with other parties was amazing he was very consistent he never sold the principle and he respected the right of other parties to exercise the role for which they were elected for their right to express their views and he was if you refuse to personalize issues he made sure that parliament is a chamber where great ideas are contested and under his leadership that principles was there come to comrade ntembo now when he is a minister even when comrade pemi is a chief whip you would have anticipated that comrade ntembo was going to rule from the grave comrade ntembo became <coughs> an accountable minister to parliament at any point in time when you wanted him to come and account cobram team has been there in particular as a leader of uh, monitoring and evaluation in presidency currently as we speak we are trying in parliament to improve the science of the of the oversight as in particular from the governing party led by comrade pemi it became very clear that unless we collaborate with the ministry on monitoring and evaluation we needed we would not we wouldn't be able to actually realize the ideal goals we were dreaming about indeed when we spoke to comrade mtembo he never wasted time 
when we actually confronted him to account as a minister, he never wasted time to submit. That's the kind of a comrade uh, comrade team was. Of course, uh, his role in dealing with pandemic is known by the entire South Africa. What are, what are his defining features in with regard to leadership? Comrade Tembo, uh, one of his defining features is, he, is, hum is his humanity beyond what we call partisanship. Because first, we are South Africans. First, we are a nation before we become different parties. Great leadership in this environment is leadership that is able to ensure that the, an environment does occur where all participants, with this, irrespective of their different ideas, are allowed an opportunity to express their view so that when a decision is taken in line with our constitution, the principle of participatory democracy has been exhausted. Again, dependable leadership. What was also very interesting about Comrade Ntembo is that if you work under him and you report to him and he write down what his expectations are, you, it didn't matter whether you went to Malanga, whether you went to Nobu, whether you went to Northwest, you knew that you wouldn't come back to account him on different principles other than those he would have agreed with you on. What I also like about Comrade Jackson, he, he, he believed that if you are a leader, you don't submit to the emotional aspect, you follow your mind. That's what Comrade Jackson was always. So the point I'm trying to make about here, we are losing a comrade who are very consistent, who fought corruption, who was adherent of the principle of good governance till his death. And I want to urge you, if we talk, for instance, about groupings in South Korea, I think Comrade Tem would have happened to belong to a grouping because when groupings are entrenched, even if you advance the principles of the institution, because there's a group you disagree with, you will always be located in a group. I want to argue, Comrade Jackson never belonged to any group. He belonged to the principles of the institutions within which he was deployed. I guess going forward to emulate him, to actually take forward he, and use his spear properly is when we adopt a principle of being adherence to the principles of the institutions where they were, where were deployed, whether it's your political party, whether it's government. This is what Comrade Jackson sort of represented. We are going to miss that credible leadership, that reputable leadership, that principled leadership, that human leadership, that warm leadership, that loving leadership, uh, that caring leadership. And we are faced with the challenge of ensuring that that poverty which has been created by his departure is actually sorted out and replaced very soon. Uh, Thank you, Comrade Mondi. Mondi, I'm sorry about that. I'm going to request the Deputy President is supposed to speak at 12 o'clock. He's got an engagement, which is going to start at half past 12. And, and we must allow mm -hmm. him to be able to do that job. Now, mm -hmm. what that means, uh, GCIS, please mute. GCIS, please help us to mute. So I'm going to request that um, and I apologize because you were on the program to speak but because of time and all of that from the Department of uh, Public Service and Administration let us have one person speaking instead of two as the program I'm going to request that Minister Mkunu be the one that speaks and, and I'm sorry, Minister, if you can keep it below five minutes, I'm also going to request that Minister Lamola, the Minister of uh, Justice and Correctional Services, five minutes as well. I'm sorry about that. Um, 
I'm trying to cut the program short so that we can make it for the time for the president. And then we'll have Minister Naledi Pando, Dr. Naledi Pando from International uh, Relations and Cooperation to all just speak five minutes, all of you. Please speak. I do not want to, to, to cut you. I want to respect the time of the deputy president. Let's allow him to speak at 12 o'clock so that at half past 12, he can be able to attend to a very important meeting, which he has. So, um, Minister Senzom Kunu is your platform. Please speak to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. I'm, I'm sorry, Minister. GCIS, there's somebody that's popping in. Please cut them or close their video or, or whatever. And then let's allow the minister to speak to us. Please, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, all protocol observed once more. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Yesterday we laid to rest a great man. Even the rain signified that heavens were rejoicing at his arrival. Since the news of Minister Jackson Timbo's passing broke out, regardless of their standing, to serve a real service of the people. Comrade Jackson Tim was, uh, was known he was indeed a person. A in the room, even in situations which want a seriousness, Jackson always found a way to cut it. In a room, not a person, and Sorry about uh, the cut. In our regular, um, so he, he, I would like to elevate uh, as a man of the people above any room temperature, but as a real people's person, because the people are the first law. They are the alpha and omega, and uh, we must always obey their true interests, not fashioned interests. In our regular conversations, it became apparent to me that Jackson be, uh, believed that the so-called divisions within the ruling party were by and large artificial and self-designed, depending on your attitude towards corruption, greed, and wrongdoing. Having been elected to uh, represent government in the multi-sectoral African peer review mechanism, National Governing Council, that is as part of the Interministerial Committee. Minister Mtimbu actively participated in the activities 
undertaken by the NGC and it was a strong pillar, especially to me as a focal point on the African peer review. He gave inputs during meetings and discussions, fostered the environment for dialogue and provided great understanding to all members of the NGC as to what our roles were as a collective and as individuals why advocating good governance, transparency and accountability. The NGC will forever be grateful for his contribution. Some leaders, many of us would love to emulate. He wore permanent, a permanent smile on his face and was kind in nature, as if he never got angry. He was a brave man, never one to shy away from expressing his emotions. This is evidenced by the words he spoke of his personal life in his line of work and in his role as a comrade and the decisions he took. He was honest, truthful, and a good listener. His unwavering fight against corruption was commendable and his legacy is one that must uh, be kept alive. As a comical, as he was, uh, Jackson would often say, when you are in a conversation and in a, a discussion with an, un, an unwarranted sense of agency, I must go now. Uh, he has uh, departed for eternity and he will be dearly missed. And to his family, uh, we are thanking them uh, very much for having allowed them to, uh, be a, a, to work not only for themselves, uh, but for South Africa as a whole. And he was a, a, a very strong campaigner against the coronavirus and the very same virus which claimed his life. In honor of his name, his legacy, and his legacy, and for his death not to be in vain, I urge all South Africans to heed uh, to the plea of government as a directive that uh, we should wear masks and uh, we should sanitize and we should maintain uh, distance uh, when we are uh, in close proximity. And at the end, there is no one who can fully tell of a life of a true Kada. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Indeed, uh, we've lost a great leader. I'm going to request Minister Lamola to speak. And I'm sorry, we're all mourning. 12 o'clock, the deputy, the deputy president must be. Minister, it's your platform. Uh, thank you very much, uh, program director, the deputy president, uh, colleagues and cabinet and deputy ministers, DGs and the government officials, the Mchembu family and the SANEF. Uh, condolences to the Mchembu family, your loss is our loss and, the, and is the loss of the people of South Africa. Humanity is confronted by the biggest existential challenge since the Spanish flu. We are no longer at peace. As the song of the departed legendary jazz musician, Jonas Buangwa, says, and may his soul rest in peace. Uliba Belinga Shul, our lives are uncertain. It is clear for humanity to survive. We need to stand and fight together against the virus. And this is the message Minister Mtimbu communicated till the end of his life. Our lives have turned upside down. What used to be normal is no longer normal. What used to be legal is now illegal. Mvelase was at the center of communicating this new normal. He helped us to do so with this. The COVID-19 pandemic has truly ripped through society at an unprecedented scale. Every aspect of our lives has been touched by this pandemic and it has caused irreparable harm. Perhaps the most striking feature of this harm is the manner in which it has removed our loved ones permanently from society. 
our generation had the privilege to have a role model in Mbelas, who was a guiding light to youngsters like myself as we were growing up in the youth structures of the years. We had a role model to look up to. His art of communicating complex government policies with ease, of breaking down political lingo into ease and accessible language was unparalleled. He could start the hashtag with ease. He demystified conspiracies on the fight against COVID-19. He clarified from the 500 billion relief fund and the importance of us accessing the vaccine as soon as possible, despite all manner of conspiracies. Every time he called on me to act on his position, he demanded the same simplicity and accessible language. He will say, Lamola, don't bring legal jargons to my press briefings. If you know he was firm, robust, yet could yield to a voice of reason. His ability to educate while calling you to order was always a display when we were in the leadership of the youth league. I can still vividly remember Velas saying to us in the youth league, the ANC is flambergasted and disgusted by the conduct of the youth league. He could frown at us yet educational, and you could not miss the position of love from which he was calling you to order from. He understood that you can be militant but remain disciplined. For the sixth administration, he digested and simplified complex scientific expert information on COVID-19 into a simple and accessible language to everyone in South Africa. This ability will be sorely missed in government communication. He had the skill of breaking complex and complicated discussion through humor. This skill maybe could be equaled by another departed soul like uh, Collins Chaban. His jokes could help ease a tense conversation. I will miss your jokes in Veras to diffuse a tense environment in the room. As President Sir Ramaphosa said yesterday, Minister Mtembu was a lover of the truth and the hater of injustice, falsehoods and dis disunity. The community of Emalachin, in their own volition, through the guard of honor demonstrated during his funeral yesterday that he was a leader of the people. I believe the community of Wanyamaza, where he also used to live, could have done the same. Velas, your legacy will speak for itself for years to come. Lalangoto Olom Velas, him, him. May his soul rest in peace. Agwetanga, Ugmetanga, Umde, Mogam Team, City Dude. Thank you, uh, Program Director. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. When I saw you yesterday, you looked very depressed and sad. I'm also sad. May he rest in peace. Indeed, the people of Mpumalanga, Woodbank, are going to miss him. I'm going to request that our Minister of International Relations and Corporations also talk to us about her experience with him on international trips and everything else. They're both NEC members. Minister Lady, it's your platform. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Program Director, uh, Deputy President, uh, Ministers in Cabinet, Honorable Members, and all who join us today. I wish to begin by expressing the deepest condolences and sincere sympathy of all my cabinet colleagues at the loss of our dear comrade and colleague, Minister Jackson Tembu. To his family, friends, and others that we do not know, your loss is our loss. We have all lost a loved one and we are all poorer for it. Our cabinet is weaker due to his passing. A fresh breath of life for all is gone. His nature was one of optimism, courage, and sincere enterprise. In the NA chamber or NEC meeting venues, strong ethical opinions stated without fear were his political badge. Comrade Jackson was renowned as the premier talented spokesperson of the African National Congress. 
he would mesmerize media practitioners like no other, not due to dissembling, but because when he spoke, there was honest intent to communicate and fully inform. Whether warts or roses, he was adept at the word. It was a surprise to have him return to parliament as chief whip of the majority party. He took to the position like a duck to water, deftly engaging the new robust entrance in overalls and going toe to toe where needed with them. Also with Honorable Steinhazen, I think all knew when it came to Jackson Tembu in grand political style, he was unmatched. He was similarly competent as minister in the presidency, contributing fully in cabinet and sincerely hardworking in all the demanding tasks of his portfolio, including internationally. He convened meetings as required and was well prepared. My officials remarked in 2019 that his report that we provided to the United Nations was one of the first occasions in which South Africa submitted on time. The COVID-19 period must have been tough for our colleague. We worked remotely, so no hugs, no kisses, which he loved to give generously to all of us. His big spirit will be missed, but never forgotten. Dear Minister Tembu, rest in peace. You achieved much more than the Almighty planned, and we pray that he receives your spirit with mercy. Lalango Kolo Mbelas. I could continue, uh, Program Director, if, if uh, you allow. I love you so much, Doctor. <laughs> and I called you by your first name intentionally. You can continue for three minutes. Yes. Thank you. Unmute. And I wanted to, and to add, yeah. as you'd asked, mm -hmm. uh, had assumed responsibility for supporting our president in the African Union champion role on infrastructure that President Ramaphosa currently holds. And Minister Mtembu faithfully executed this task. It is actually incredible that many of us do not know the various infrastructure projects that are underway in the African continent. He got to grips with all the work that was being done and help to steer colleagues throughout the continent to ensure that we are meeting timeframes and that where we have not initiated practical action on the infrastructure projects, that we do so as current chair of the African Union. This was an indefatigable colleague who was faithful to the task given to him and never a penny taken which did not belong in his pocket. While we will miss the jokes, the laughter, the hugs, the kisses, he lived a life bigger than any person is required to live. Politics, representing the nation, supporting the poor, raising family, being a good friend, being an activist. No one can say a full life has not been lived. Rest in peace, my dear colleague. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Doctor. I want to have a PhD like you. I'm going to request quickly, it's 20 to 12. The DP must speak at 12 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to request a family member, Mr. Teddy Gomba, to talk to us. It's all said. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, it's still almost good morning. Good morning, everybody. Morning, morning. Okay. You are audible. 
You can speak. I Thank you. I was talking yes. to myself. Um, <laughs> You're fine. You're audible. Um, yes, you can speak. Thanks. Um, to the my greetings to the deputy president, uh, Didi Maguza, the Montembo family ministers and deputy ministers. Our family chain is broken and um, nothing seems the same. But God holds on us one by one. But the, uh, you never gave no one a farewell, no ever said um, goodbye. You were gone before we knew it. And God knows why. We will miss you. If love alone could save you, you would never, never you would have died. In life, we love you dearly, and in death, we still love you. Our hearts, our, our hearts hold a place no one else can feel. It broke our hearts to lose you. But the messages of uh, condolences from the people of South Africa uh, eased our pain. We would we would like also to take this opportunity to thank um, the, the office of the president, the doctors and the nurses um, treated good. We want to thank his political home, the African National Congress for shaping him. Today, um, we hear messages of um, selflessness, discipline, and all other things. Uputi is a product uh, of the South African struggle. He was shaped by the struggles so far people. If, uh, so we would want them to thank uh, the, the African National Congress and its alliance partners for giving him the opportunity to lead and to contribute to the country's uh, development and the country's politics. We, 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 we feel much honored, yes, painful as it is, but we, we, we find solace in the fact that uh, he was able to make a contribution to the South African society. And for that, we want to thank his party, and the people of South Africa uh, for giving him that opportunity. It would be the very difficult, um, you know, to be given the responsibility to speak about a departed um, loved one.
and officials, the media fraternity, ladies and gentlemen, our country is gripped in the deep throes of pain. Death keeps striking. In this instance, it struck our cabinet colleague, the minister in the presidency, Mr. Jackson and P. Wam Temu, whom we are gathered to pay homage today. This is not a passing of an individual, but a premature departure of a representative of the great generation. The likes of Minister Mtembu come to pass this way once. In their wake, they leave us the gifts of liberty and freedom. In their commendable journey, they leave us footprints of a well-fought struggle, and they take with them a well-deserved glories of reverence. It falls upon a special generation to dream of liberation and to achieve it. And for such freedom to be cherished, Minister Mtembu belonged to this eminent generation of freedom fighters whose contribution to our freedom and democracy deserves to be cherished by generations. Minister Mtembu symbolizes a generation of freedom fighters who came of political age after June 1976 to leave us footprints of a well-fought struggle against apartheid and a well-trodden journey to build foundations of a democracy in South Africa. Fellow mourners, as we gather to remember this outstanding son of the soil, it is not lost on us that in the recent past, Minister Mtembu survived an armed robbery where he almost lost his life. And he also overcame pain for the loss of his late mother and the traumatic loss of his eldest daughter. Despite these personal adversities, and tragic moments in his life, Minister Mtembu demonstrated amazing abilities to overcome pain and use his own experience to inspire hope in others. This was a man who was always willing to meet anyone and everyone, irrespective of their social standing. This is a man full of empathy and compassion, committed to the values of human solidarity and servant leadership. Having overcome this and surviving many threats to his life as an activist during the fight against apartheid, tragically, Today, we lost him through this invisible enemy. The reality of the COVID-19 pandemic we are faced with is a tangible reminder that life knows no sense of occasion. Just as it gives arbitrarily in birth, it also takes indiscriminately in death taking away the steady shoulders of giants. 
It shakes the foundations upon which we stand tall and exposes that we are but mere mortals. As our country joins the world in the collective fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, we are assembled here and joined virtually by many to acknowledge the unrivaled representative of ethical leadership. As a nation, we have been unjustly robbed of a champion for social justice, for the marginalized and destitute. For him, the public service leadership role meant that in everything we do, we must never stray from our relentless pursuit of changing the lives of the poor and vulnerable amongst us. Minister Mtembu's commitment to freedom, human rights and democratic governance is beyond reproach. He stood for the truth and nothing less. Without doubt, the untimely passing of Minister Mtembu is a loss not only to his family, but an unforeseen grief shared by many from diverse political formations and ideological orientations, more especially to those who admired his humanity. It is not surprising to find that leaders from different sectors of society and in the media fraternity stand undivided in commending the personal and professional attributes of Minister Mtembu. To them, Minister Mtembu was an exceptional bridge builder and a model of selfless public service to the people. In him, through his deeds, he personified what Martin Luther King Jr. said about effective leadership. I quote, a genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus, close quote. Fortunately, this sage council was embraced by Minister Mtembu from his early days as a student activist, when he was a labor representative, and in various guises as the spokesperson of the governing party. He also served in the Provincial Executive Council of Mpumalanga Provincial Government, where I personally had a privilege to serve alongside him when he was the chief whip of the governing party in the National Assembly, his consensus molding attributes shown for all to see and learn from across the political divide. His inclusive and collaborative approach to resolving issues facing the nation defined his core attributes as a leader who played a critical role in shaping our democracy. He understood that the diversity of views and ideological differences should not engender hatred and anger. Instead, debates and differences are essential ingredients of a strong democratic culture that always seek to find common ground, unity, and shared sense of patriotism and nationhood. Fellow compatriots, more recently in the sixth administration led by President Ramaphosa, his empowering attributes guided his exercise of executive authority in overseeing a diverse portfolio of communication related entities. Minister Mtembu was a fitting person to lead these entities for his life has always been about giving meaning and effective basic rights like access to information by all 
media freedom for all, freedom of expression without censure. As we continue in our efforts of building a united and a prosperous nation, we celebrate the lives and times of this gentle giant, a decent and upright leader who saw the occupation of public office not as a vehicle for the pursuit of selfish interests, but for the advancement of public good, transformation of society, transparency of the state, and democratic governance. Few will disagree that Minister Mtembu serves as a role model to his colleagues and to the young of our nation. To him, governing instead of ruling meant implementing government's priorities in a manner that maintains the integrity of the state while seeking to eliminate cynicism towards it. As a minister in the presidency, he inspired all staff irrespective of rank and he respected them equally. He actively worked with administrative leadership in the institution as we sought to build an agile, responsive, and fit for purpose presidency that provides leadership at the apex of government in order to tackle critical issues that are facing our country. Minister Mtemp was always preoccupied by realizing the idol of a capable and a developmental state. This is important presently in the fight, in the fight that we are waging against the second surge of the COVID-19 cases, which we are trying very hard to strengthen our healthcare system. We must at all all of us come together and place our shoulders to the wheel in the continued fight of preventing human mortality and play our part in curbing the further spread of the virus, as well as support efforts to find scientific solutions to the current crisis. Fellow compatriots, as we pay tribute to Minister Mtemu, we should leverage on the lessons we have learned in 2020, when to some extent we managed to stem the first stage of the COVID-19 pandemic. One abiding lesson we take with us in 2021 is that working in silos as various government departments and entities compromises our ability to implement an existential fight to save lives and livelihoods. In his role as the minister in the presidency, Minister Mtembu played a critical leadership role in enhancing the coordination and integration of government efforts in the fight against this ravaging impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, including fostering partnership with government social partners. Therefore, in honoring his life, it is incumbent upon all of us from labor, business, academia, civil society, interfaith and traditional institutions to come together in the fight to save lives and livelihoods and finally defeat the pandemic. As we closed the year in December last year, Minister Mtembu was instrumental in our engagement with military veterans from all formations as we sought to improve their well-being. On the day of his passing, we were scheduled to meet with and provide feedback to the president on these engagements. So Minister Mtembu passed on in the line of duty. 
We therefore make use of this platform in his memory to recognize Minister Mtembu's incomparable talents in advancing the cause of freedom and democracy. He put his talent to great use in ensuring that as government, we build a coherent machinery that is able to translate people's aspirations into tangible programs and to simple, simplify complex policy propositions in a manner that people will understand and relate to and how such would improve their lives. Ending the spread of this virus and defeating this virus will be a befitting tribute to Minister Mtembo. He left us with hope that this is possible. When on the 11th of January this year, he said, as a people, we must overcome COVID-19. May the soul and the spirit of Minister Jackson Mpiguamtembu rest in eternal peace. And may his exemplary actions live with us forever. To his family, especially his dear wife, Tembi, and the children, we extend our deepest condolences. Your loss is a loss to the country and humanity. Thank you very much. We thank you. Thank you, Deputy President. Indeed, we have lost the people of Mpumalanga and ourselves. We have deeply lost. You looked down yesterday when we were at the funeral. And condolences to you as well. As our Deputy President in the African National Congress, we have truly lost. I'm going to ask um, Minister Nkosa Zanadlamini Zuma who is the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs to talk to us as part of a closing remarks. Thank you. GCIS, please link the the minister. Thank you much. Thank you very much, program director. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very loud and clear. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the Mtembu family, Deputy President, uh, Honorable Didi Mabuza, fellow cabinet ministers, leaders of government in the provinces, in the national and local, members of the planning commission, and all the members of the media, political parties, compatriots. We have come to the end of the memorial service of one of our most dedicated, upright, humble, loving, courageous, honest, ethical, revolutionary leaders. From the time of the news of his departure, Minister Jackson Tembu, the government, the family has been overwhelmed by thousands of messages, comforting words from the length and breadth of our country, our continent, the world over. And all the messengers, the communicators from across the political spectrum have 
said in one word that Minister Jackson was a servant of the people, was an excellent communicator, was a unifier, and he worked with everyone. And we want to thank all those who have spoken, who have written, who have said, and who have actually unleashed to the world the tapestry of Minister Mtembu's beautiful life. We have heard all the aspects of his life, but I want to just express one side of him. The president last year, uh, in 2019 actually, uh, launched the district development model. And last year, he appointed champions to the different districts. And Minister Mtembu was appointed to Herikwala as a champion. Herikwala is a rural district, poor district, far from the lights of the cities. But let me say that Minister Mtembu was there, was working enthusiastically with commitment and making sure that those people in the rural areas who are poor are saved. And we want to thank him for that and appreciate him for that, in addition to everything that has been said about him. We also want to thank all those who worked with him and how in obeying the rules of COVID-19, they were able to put their grief and their mourning aside in his office, in the presidency, and across the country in Pumalanga, were able to make sure that his funeral was organized in a short space of time. And we also want to thank the mourners in Pumalanga. It was very heartwarming to see them lining the streets, braving the rain, they didn't say, oh, only 50 people are allowed in the, in the service, but they were there lining the streets, bidding farewell to this revolutionary leader of our country. We also want to thank the office, the GS, GCIS and all those who have organized this memorial service, but more importantly, to thank the family as we express our deep sympathy and condolences to them, but to thank them for giving us the opportunity to also uh, celebrate this life, but also for giving him because to the organization because he had a family, but he was always there at work in all the different aspects that he was given. And we are going to take his spear, more importantly, as the DP has said, and we thank him and the president that we must defeat COVID-19 because U Jackson, I'll call him Jackson, U Jackson died in the war against COVID. He died trying to protect the lives of South Africans, trying to protect the livelihoods of South Africans. And his life was claimed by this COVID-19. And therefore, it must inspire us to work even harder, to work even harder to defeat this sketch, to protect the lives of our people and their livelihoods. We want to thank all South Africans who have paid tribute to this unwavering uh, cadre of our country. 
and Situhambega Shemvelas. We are now joining the galaxy of our heroes and heroines. And Wenzi le umsebenz wako, Wenzi gashe, besi satembi le gutiguningo zo gwenza, kodwa, aguna ndaba gutupili skate singaga nani, ogubalulegile, ogwenzi le, siabonga. Uh, thanks to all who have participated. Thank you. Long live and thanks to Mr. Oscar, text him people are long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Indeed, we're long going live. to miss him in so many ways. Yes, he must long live. This brings us to the closing of, of the memorial service. Thank you, South Africans. Thank you, Deputy President, for coming to speak about him. I want to also thank you, ministers, all of you who participated. And I also want to apologize for others who were on the program. And we had to cut you short. We really apologize. Um, let's continue to send condolences to the family, our written messages, and so on. Mama Tembi, just like me, myself, Tembi, she's expecting them. Let's continue to send them to her and to give the family strength so that they can continue. As the African National Congress, we have lost as, as, as government in this sixth administration, like the, the, the previous minister was talking, we have lost. May you rest in peace, Minister. And this officially closes the memorial service. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs>